Good morning, everyone. So I hope everyone's doing well today. Um, so today's speaker is is me. So I'm my name is Rini, and here's a little bit about myself before I start on with the webinar. After graduating from OCAD in 2008, I pursued a short career in interior design at Yabu Pushelberg. Uh, for a year and a half, and then shortly after interior design, I took a lighting certificate course at Ryerson and got my foot into the door with Crossy Engineering, Smith & Anderson, and A.T. Jangus, um, where I performed lighting calculations for commercial, tenant, and P3 hospital projects. Currently, I now am part of the sales team at Lightline and a Fundamentals of Lighting instructor for the Illuminating Engineering Society, and I am a member of the International Association of Lighting Designers. And today's topic is lighting for museums. So the art of museum lighting. To get into the design of a museum lighting layout, we need to know what is the story behind the exhibition. Where are they placed in the exhibits? How should the lighting tie into the way the exhibit and the choreography of the music and how people move in the space? Lighting is about visibility, but also perception. At its core, lighting designed for a museum is about controlling what is light and what is dark to help tell a story. To get ourselves into the context of how lighting illuminates treasured works of art, here are three design points a designer has to keep in mind. So number one, the story and the concept. Smart lighting design helps tell the story of works of art. And then number two, the design methodologies. Number three, art conservation. And number four, Throughout this presentation, there will be projects and design examples and product suggestions to visually guide you through this webinar. Smart lighting design helps tell the stories of work of art. Art museums are largely visual experiences, and when we create museum exhibits, we create a narrative and design settings. Lighting plays a major role in creating wide open spaces for self-discovery and exploration or it can shrink the spaces so visitors feel a tightly scripted narrative. Just like the actors in a production play who have all different roles, all artwork has its own unique place in an exhibit. That's why lighting designers never equally light all objects in a gallery. Creative lighting schemes introduce a variety of intensities and light levels to establish a special rhythm. The next few slides will show examples of a few schemes that have been garnered International Lighting Awards. The first project is called the Shanzi History Museum. The Shanzi History Museum is an art palace that presents Shanzi culture and ancient Chinese civilization. I chose this project to share with you all because of the interesting contrast, shadows, and light intensities that can clearly define visually each zone of interest on these objects to create that exhibition experience. The brightness of the lighting is gradually changing and there is an invisible moving line from one exhibition to another. By emphasizing the lighting atmosphere of each design highlight, the use of light with various brightness distributions arouses visitors' emotional feelings and achieves a more attractive experience. For the showcases you see in the bottom photo, there are spotlights at two watts with a very narrow tight beam angle of seven degrees, lighting up the small ivory colored objects in the display case and turning this into a centerpiece and focal point. For the longitudinal linear display cases on either sides, there are wall washers and small sized spotlights with louvers and multiple lenses at lower illuminances that are used to provide even lighting to the wall surface and as well as indirectly lighting up the space. In this part of the exhibition, we have two types of track lights that were chosen to project light onto a Buddha from multiple directions. By applying the combinations of light and shadows and the contrast of brightness and darkness, this allows the Buddha to come to life and alive to visitors. 
3000K color temperature of warm white lights was chosen to better present the texture and grain of the Buddha. Choosing narrow beam spreads and aiming it onto a specific part of the structure, such as the face, brings this detail to the forefront. Another layer of illumination is aimed onto her body with slightly less light, providing that ethereal effect and softly lit glow throughout this composition. Here in this photo, which is the last slide for this project, we have a tiny dragon artifact being lit in a display case. There are specially designed linear light slots in the ceiling that conceal tiny little trackhead luminaires with very precise beam angles of 3 and 7 degrees with high illumination intensities that are aimed onto this object. However, to also light up the path to guide the visitors throughout the exhibit, a combination of accent lights and wall washers with medium and wide beam angles are used. On to the right, I have placed some examples of accessories that we offer at Lightline from our trackhead series that help achieve the desired lighting effects on this project, such as the barn door, where you see there are adjustable metal flaps that clicks onto the head of the track luminaire. This is used to help control the beam spread of the light coming out of the fixture, so it shapes the light specifically onto an area of the object being lit. The cylindrical cone snoot on the bottom right helps to control the direction or area of coverage of light and helps conceal the lamp source from this user's eyes to eliminate glare at the person's visual angle. And then lastly, the black hexagonal cell louver is composed of a honeycomb pattern that helps shield the light source at a 45 degree angle or for those that require a slight diffusion for their illumination. So on to the next point, lighting design methodology. One of the biggest challenges museum lighting designers face is the sheer number and range of objects they have to consider. Even single work, works can come with a hierarchy of lighting needs. When many different objects are displayed in a single exhibit, lighting designers must sometimes light the space so that certain objects are illuminated with bright or dim light. Light that is warm or cool, using deep or shallow angles and a variety of fixtures and sources. Of course, lighting designers also have to consider the environment where their art is displayed. Is the art hung on the wall or enclosed in a glass case? Where is the object label? Is the floor made of tile or wood? Are the adjacent objects similar or different? Now consider that many art museum exhibits change frequently. This means lighting design must be flexible and easy to customize for new objects and collections. So the German Ivory Museum. So this museum holds the collection of Count Franz of Erbach from the town of Odenwald in Germany, and this became the center of German ivory carvings in 2016. This remarkable exhibition concept was developed by C. Chow and Walter BDA Architects. Displaying ivory was and still is a very controversial subject during our times as there are species protection programs who constantly lobby outlaw poaching. So the architects and their lighting team of lighting designers decided to follow the concept of using lighting design to isolate the sculptures as a bygone era. To create an exhibition where exhibits appear floating in mid-space where we hide sources of light and illuminate what needs to be seen to differentiate hierarchies. This is actually a very powerful metaphor, as if how art seems to have fallen out of time and just exists in a parallel universe. One of the spaces within the museum, referring to the photo on the slide, uses existing historical closets that now display a wealth of objects that have been fastened to the molten fleece clad rear wall. These are set in scenes by linear light sources concealed inside the furniture. For this purpose, the continuous LED light strips have been installed horizontally in the overhead part and vertically in the flanks of the closets. 
The mounting locations have been chosen in such a fashion as to combine an optimum illumination with a minimum visibility of light sources. The display case illumination, the glass edge lighting, the pier illumination, and the orchestration of the existing closets can all be switched and dimmed individually by showcase and by room. Because the flooring has such red rich hues, all lighting elements use warm white, 2700K to 3500K. The architectural lighting team was asked to create a lighting scheme to showcase the setting and highlight the collection. The designers concealed the LED edge lighting in the frosted bottom portion of the glass cases, which makes the carvings inside appear shrouded in mist. Each display is then lit from above using miniature 3000K, 14 and 30 degree LED spotlights for a glare-free accent lighting. The walkway is illuminated using concealed LED strips to emphasize the exhibit's ambiguous sense of ground and ceiling plane. This project is my absolute favorite example of how light can create invisibility. All light sources are shielded carefully and no lights are seen being projected. In order to get the right look, and in a bid to avoid any unwanted reflections, the lower portion of the glass panes in each showcase is frosted and fitted with LED edge lighting integrated into the base. This frosted glass dissolves smoothly and gradiently into clear glass. Larger display cases make use of an alternating layout of spot and medium optic luminaires. This creates the impression that the luminous figurines within emerge from some sort of haze. The electrical feed connecting the immediate profile with the showcase's base runs into the miter joints of the glazing. The color temperature used to spotlight the ivory in this portion of the exhibition in these display cases is 5000K. To bring out the coolness of the white in contrast to the red and black background. According to the IAS and exhibition organizers, an illuminous level of 50 lux has become a standard for light sensitive exhibits in galleries and museums. On the picture to the left is a walkway ramp guiding a visitor into another zone of the exhibit. Here you will notice a balustrade with concealed LED light tape. For this purpose, a groove has been milled into the upper portion of the balustrade. The LED tape is fitted with a reflector with an asymmetric beam distribution that aims the light onto the walkway path. And this LED tape is also fitted with honeycomb louvers that shield the light sources even from a longitudinal views. The upper part of the guard can be removed for installation and maintenance of the LED strips. The LED drivers are remote and hidden in a cavity underneath the raised pier. The housing channel for the LED tape has a frosted or haze lens to help disperse, diffuse, and spread the illumination more evenly on the floor. The final space for this museum is dedicated to temporary exhibitions and so it sees the visitors off with a display of a yet to be processed elephant tusks and um, thus revealing the more controversial side of the exhibit. Ceiling mounted miniature projectors are suspended and in order to better fit into the spatial envelopes color, the luminaires are anodized in black and they have louvers and shields to ensure that with changing contents in the exhibit, the object within the space that is being lit will always be the center of attention. The next project that we will be going through is the Aga Khan Museum. The very last project, the German Ivory Museum, was an example of how lighting can create enclosed spaces by using super narrow pinpoint beam spreads 
and lighting up exactly what you want in small, minuscule details. The Aga Khan Museum is an example of a project where light can create volumetric spaces and showcase not only the artifacts and artwork, but the different spaces this building has using a variety of narrow, wide, and medium spreads. With track lighting for their auditorium, classroom, reference libraries, restaurant spaces, and meditation and prayer room spaces. The lighting design for this project is considered more volumetric, as this is a museum where we hold events um, such as weddings or conferences and architectural tours. Here in this photo is the visitor's lobby in the Aga Khan Museum, where we have recessed tracks with surface mounted track heads with medium beam spreads, just like our Flex 38 and around 4,000 lumens with a color temperature of 3,500K LED. This space has around 150 lux to 200 lux on the floor. LED tape, as you can see, is um, positioned along the glazing with a narrow beam spread and around 300 lumens per foot. And they're grazing upwards along each piece of glazing. Frosted lens is added to the tape light so you don't see the LED diodes reflecting off the glazing. Doesn't the space feel more heightened and enlarged when highlighting this glass cube with higher intensity of illumination and treating it as an elemental feature? The floor doesn't always has to be the main feature. Think of lighting up verticals to help reflect illumination into the space to achieve your uniform lighting levels. The Aga Khan Museum, which houses a permanent collection of over 1,000 objects, will constantly reconfigure their displays. Since this exhibition space will be used for many types of functions and the artwork will be adjustable over time, Trimless recessed track luminaires are seen installed in a uniform manner with adjustable track heads and various beam spreads. To visually understand what type of luminaire can be used, I have here the Lightline Track Flex Family Series that have lumen output ranges from 1,350 lumens all the way to 4,200 lumens to suit exhibition spaces like this with beam spreads such as 15, 25, 40, or 60 degrees. And they come in 2700K, 3000K, 3500K, and 4000K color temperatures. Finishes come in white, black, or silver. The whole building was lit up as an artifact itself and many coves were incorporated into the space to highlight the symbolistic patterns on the walls, ceilings and floors. The photo on the slide is an anteroom that leads into the prayer hall. The anteroom features a mucarena ceiling with a skylight and is highlighted with a tape light with frosted lens, around 450 lumens per foot hidden in the custom architectural cove that grazes the pattern on the ceiling. Ambient lighting is provided by six inch aperture downlights around 1800 lumens, a downlight product just like our Sigma 3000 series. Our Lightline Sigma 3000 series offers lumen packages ranging from 1000 to 2500 lumens with narrow, medium, and wide beam spreads. And they come in 2700K, 3000K, 3500K, and 4000K color temperatures. Don't forget to check out our Sigma 4000 and 5000 series, which offer even higher lumen packages, ranging from 1000 lumens to 5000 lumen packages for those double or triple story heights. The design of the auditorium in the museum is inspired by a vision statement of light, by His Highness the Aga Khan. The notion of light has been an inspiration for numerous human faiths and decades of history are referred to as the Enlightenment. 
The Aga Khan had hoped that the building and spaces around it would be seen as a celebration of light and the mysteries of light that nature and the human soul illustrate at every moment of our lives. The rectilinear building is oriented 45 degrees to the solar north where all of its sides are exposed to the sun. Hidden in the ceiling is a sundial pattern and surrounding the sundial, pa sundial pattern, you will notice there are pockets where we have 50 watts to 150 watt LED floodlights and they have all variations of beam spreads and they're just peeking through the gap between the sundial ceiling, the floating ceiling, and also the vertical portion of the wall. This was the only place where luminaires can be placed as they cannot interfere with acoustic panels and the vertical wooden slats. 3500K color temperature was picked to balance the warmth of the cedar wood panels and also the coolness of the white crisp sundial ceiling above. So on to the final and most important point for lighting in museums, which is the conservation. Conservation might be the concern that mostly distinguishes the art of the art museum lighting. LEDs are gaining traction among museums and galleries for several reasons, not the least of which is that they are the safest source for light sensitive artwork. Compared to other sources, LEDs do produce far less ultraviolet UV radiation. Of course, all forms of visible light contain at least some form of UV radiation and all visible light damages fragile artwork. That's why lighting designers strive to illuminate light sensitive fine art as dimly as possible. Strategies include using lower wattages, adding metal screens or using dimmers, preferably through Bluetooth, DALI or DMX as they create less flicker. In the past, to protect their paintings, museums put UV filters over their inefficient incandescent bulbs. However, luckily, LEDs are much more simpler. They don't give off UV or infrared at all. This is the very end of the webinar. So that was a very light touch upon about lighting for museums. If there are any questions regarding lighting design or lighting layouts or what type of products to be used to suit these spaces, please feel free to shout out here or even afterwards. You can contact me at rni at lightline.com or 647-299-8603. I hope you have a great weekend.